Hello everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about using radial masks for local adjustments. I'm going to show you how you can use them to segment your image into different areas, make adjustments that are powerful, and make your image that much better. Uh, before we get started, I want to take a moment and say hello Robert, ciao Maurizio, hello Jerry, hello Bonsoir, JGmail28, and so good to see you. I'm so impressed of our worldwide audience. That is just so very cool. I'm continuously amazed by how small technology makes the world and brings us all together. So thank you guys all for being here. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. So I've got this beautiful image up on the screen. This is my after image. Let me go ahead and show you what we've got in the before. So this is the before image. It's still very beautiful, but it lacks depth. It's very flat and we're gonna work on it and bring it to this, which I feel is a much more dynamic image. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on my image, go to adjustments and revert to original and I'll walk you through the entire edit. Hello, Pat, hello, Julie, so glad you're able to be here. All right, so in I'm gonna start with a template and let's go to easy landscapes and let's choose forest stream. Now I did try this ahead of time so I knew which one I was gonna pick but typically when I'm going through the templates, I just click through them, see what the effect is, and see if it gets me a, a closer starting point to where I wanna go with the image. Sometimes it's a great inspiration to try different templates as well if you're not sure how you wanna edit a photo. But we'll go ahead and start with this. I feel like it brought out a little bit of contrast. It popped the colors a little bit. It made the detail in the clouds come out some more. So we'll go ahead and roll with that. Now we'll go over to the Edit tab and we'll go up to Tools and the first thing I want to go over, since we're going to be dealing a lot with radial masks today, is to look at your image in segments. Figure out what your subject is, what the story is that you're trying to tell, and then break your image up into areas that you want to work on and improve. So for instance, with this image, we've got our cottage here, which is definitely the main subject. That's where we want to bring the eye. We want to lead your viewer straight up to that cabin. Then we have these beautiful hillsides that are back a little bit. They have some great detail, but we also wanna create separation with our foreground. And then of course we wanna bring out all that gorgeous detail in the sky. So let's go ahead and start with our structure. And I'm gonna pull up the amount slider a bit more and bring out some of that gorgeous detail throughout the image. Now I'm noticing that the greens are a little bit oversaturated. I wanna go down to my dramatic tool and that's gonna give us more drama, more detail, and it's also going to desaturate a little bit. So let's go ahead and bring that up. And I love what this tool does with this photo. It just brings out all of these wonderful details. Now that we've done that, we've got a pretty good balanced image. I'm gonna go over to our local masking and we'll start doing some work on our individual areas, namely our cabin here, and then these hillsides in the background. Hey Russ, so glad you're able to join us today. All right. So let's go over to local masking and up to add and basic. And we'll start by creating a radial mask focusing in on our cabin. So I'm gonna go to where it says paint mask to the drop down menu, choose radial mask. And then we have two buttons below. The one on the left is going to give you a mask covering everything outside of the circle. The one on the right is gonna be everything inside of the circle. In this instance, we wanna use the inside of the circle because we want our changes to affect that cabin. So now I'm gonna go ahead and draw a circle here over my cabin. And now I wanna see what's being affected and what's not. I'm gonna to go to the ellipses menu and I'm gonna click on show mask. And this is gonna give us a red overlay that shows us exactly what is going to be affected when we start moving those sliders. Now let's go ahead and adjust the size of this. I'm gonna make this more of an oval. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. Let's go ahead and space this out a little bit. Oops, I moved it in the wrong way. Let's go ahead and pull that back down. There we go, there, that's what I wanted. All right, so there we go. And the thing with using radial masks to segment different areas of your, of your image is you wanna have a nice wide transition. So your transition area is from this inner circle out to the outer circle, and that's going to give you a soft, smooth transition so there's not a harsh line showing where you made adjustments. Now in this case, I might bring this in a little bit smaller, but we've got that nice wide transition around it. So now our target is going to be that cabin and it blends seamlessly with the areas around it. So let me go ahead while we're going, so we're gonna go ahead and make some adjustments. Let me turn off that overlay. I'll click on hide mask. And now we can bring up the exposure a little bit. I definitely wanna bring up those shadows because it's a very, very dark building. And I wanna make sure we can see all the beautiful detail on the front of that building. And I think that's looking good so far. 
Now let's go ahead and work on these hillsides in the background. I'm gonna to go to add and basic. We'll add another local mask here. And we're gonna do another radial mask. And we're gonna do it from the inside, not the outside. And we're gonna first target this hillside over here. Now I'll turn that uh, overlay back on. So click on show mask. And so we can see what's being affected. Now, obviously a straight circle isn't great for this hillside, but we can make that more into an oval and we can rotate it so it really fits that area. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down a little bit, come to our inner circle. Actually, we'll grab this handle up here. We'll scrunch that down. Then we're gonna go here and just start dragging this out and making this bigger. There we go. And so we want a nice big oval with a soft, smooth transition. And now if we go just outside of our circle, we can tilt that so it more closely fits the shape of that hillside. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that around a little bit more, move that so it suits that area nicely. And again, you wanna have a nice wide transition. So I'm gonna pull out that outer circle a little bit more. There we go. There we go. All right, now to go ahead and see the changes we're gonna make, I'm going to turn off that overlay by going to the ellipses and hide mask. And what I wanna do to add some depth and dimension is actually darken down those, those uh, hillsides there in the background. So we'll grab our exposure slider and pull that down to the left just a little bit. And we're just creating separation with that foreground. We don't wanna make it too dramatic, but look at what that does also for the fog that's coming over this hillside. It really brought out some, some drama there and the clouds here on the edges and just creates a little bit more depth. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side with this hillside. We'll go up to add and basic. Go ahead and let that load up there for a second. There we go. We'll go down to our radial mask. We'll make sure we're painting the inside of the circle and then we'll go to this region and we'll draw another circle and we'll make this into an oval like we did with the other one. So I'm going to grab on these handles, shrink this in a little bit. There we go. My computer's being a little slow today, so I apologize. All right, give me a moment here. We'll get this positioned. Just a second. All right, for some reason, my computer is being a little finicky with this radial mask today. It was working earlier. There we go. There we go. That's great. All right, let me rotate that a bit. And now we've got a great radial mask over that hillside. And if we want to see what's being affected, we can go up to the ellipses menu and show mask and make sure that the area we want to cover is being covered. I think this could actually be a little bit bigger to come up that hillside a little bit more and maybe pull in that transition a little closer because we don't want it to come out too far this way. And then I might pull that up to the left a little bit more there. Perfect. So let's go ahead and turn off that overlay. Click on the ellipses menu and hide mask. And again, we're going to just pull down the exposure ever so slightly to create a little bit more depth and separation with that hillside. And we don't want to take it too far. Again, we're not looking to see something dramatic where you can see that somebody basically painted a circle over your image. You're just wanting to do targeted ad adjustments to different regions with a wide feather on the edge of that mask so it blends seamlessly. So with those three masks that we just did, the first one here on our cabin, and then the other two on the hillsides behind it, we're able to draw a lot of separation and really draw the viewer in to that cabin. So let's take a look at where we've come so far. There's the before and there's the after. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous image, but we can do a little bit more. I'm gonna go back over to my tools. I'm gonna to go ahead and work a little bit more with the vignette. Now the template that we added, added a vignette already, but I'm gonna go ahead and reset this and do it myself. I like to be in control a little bit that way. So I'll pull my mount slider all the way down to negative 100. I'm probably gonna pull that size in a little bit smaller, get it down closer to my cabin. We'll go down into the advanced settings and pull that feather up really high for a nice, soft, smooth transition. So the smooth transition, the wide feather applies when you're doing a vignette as well. So let me go ahead. I'm going to add a little bit of inner light. And again, we're just trying to bring attention to that cabin. Now we'll go to choose subject and I'm going to bring that center of that vignette down a little lower in the image. I might even make that size a little bit smaller, come in a little closer. That looks good. And now we'll grab the amount slider and pull that back up until we're happy with the result. I think right, right about there looks really good. Let me take a look here at the comments and see if there's any questions. Let's see here. Manuel says he likes masking with the brush. 
um, and using a Dell pencil, awesome. The brush is a great tool. Uh, Pat's saying I see a forward slash key. Can you use that to show and hide your overlay? Pat, if you're on a Mac, yes, you can. That keyboard shortcut is Mac only. So that's why I'm showing it by the menu and not just using the, um, the keyboard shortcut. But if you're on Mac, it's a great keyboard shortcut. All right, hello, Dev Kamal, glad you're able to be here as well. Okay, so the last thing I wanna do with this image is by adding our vignette, we also darken up our foreground a little bit. And I wanna lighten up this bit here in the front and again, draw the viewer into the cabin by kind of creating a path. So here's where that masking brush is gonna come in really handy. We're gonna go back over to our local masking. We're gonna add one more mask in basic. And this time we're gonna use our paint mask. I'm going to pull the, ex the exposure up just a little bit and you'll notice this is making a global change right now. We're gonna fix that and it's only going to be localized to where we brush, but since we haven't made any brush strokes yet, it's affecting the whole image. So bear with me while we finish up these adjustments. I'm gonna do a little bit of vibrance and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring my mask opacity down. About, four, about 40% is good. We have a nice soft brush. I'll use the bracket keys on my keyboard to make that brush nice and big. And then I'm just gonna ever so gently brush this effect here on the foreground so it leads us up to the cabin. And it just creates a path and leads you subtly into the image. It's a very small change. You don't want it to be dramatic, but you just wanna bring the viewer right into that point. So let's go ahead and turn this off and turn that back on again. I hope you guys like that change. I think it makes a huge difference. And then we can take a look at our overall before and our after. It's a dramatic change. It makes this image very dynamic and appealing. And frankly, I wanna be at that little cabin on that lake right now. It's so soothing and beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed this edit and I hope you learned how you can put those radial masks to use to target various areas of your image. Make sure you use a nice wide feather on those edges. It makes everything blend beautifully and seamlessly. Hello, John, glad you're able to be here. Uh, Julie's asking if Dodge and Burn would do the same thing. Truly, it does a very similar thing. So Dodge and Burn only lightens and darkens, whereas I like to use the local masking tools because they give me a lot more options. Um, you also, in addition to just lightening and darkening, which is essentially your exposure slider, we have the ability to adjust the warmth, the contrast, target our highlights and shadows independently. We can even add some structure or take it away if we want to, and then adjust the saturation and vibrance. All of those other tools aren't available in Dodge and Burn. It's just to lighten and darken areas, but it certainly is useful to put that to use when you need to. I just like the local masking because it gives me more options. So there's a lot of different ways to get the job done. It's up to you what works best for your workflow and what you enjoy working with. So feel free to use that Dodge and Burn tool. It's a great one. All right, let me know if there's any other questions in the comments. I will do my best to get them answered before the end of the show. I wanna take a moment and thank you all for being here today. If you're enjoying this series, make sure you hit thumbs up on YouTube and that lets our producers know that you enjoy seeing the show and wanna keep us around. Uh, Vanelli will be with you, actually Vanelli and I will both be with you tomorrow because tomorrow's Friday. We can't believe this week's almost over already. Also, if you are a member of a camera club or a user group and you would like to have a presentation from Vanelli or I, we're doing free camera club presentations. It's about a 45 minute presentation. We'll get on Zoom, host a webinar for your group and do it absolutely free. You get a coupon code, you get a free gift and you get to spend some time with us with your camera club. So if that is interesting to you, email me at Angela at Skylum.com and I can get that all set up for you. They're a lot of fun and I would love to get to know you and your group better. Uh, this is for mostly English, definitely English speaking groups. So apologize if that doesn't apply to you. Um, and North America typically. However, if we can work it in with your time zone, wherever you are, we'll do our best. So reach out to me at Angela at Skylum.com and let me know if that's interesting to you. I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you at the next coffee break. Bye everyone. <laughs>